Welcome to the Terminal Value Podcast. We have Corday Alabi with us today with General Sheet Metal. And what we're going to be talking about is just sort of how the uh, how the supply chain craziness that's been happening right now has been impacting companies uh, like General Sheet Metal. Uh, Corday, don't let me talk too much here. Uh, introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, thanks so for having me on. Uh, the name is Corday Alabi, and uh, I'm the CFO Executive Vice President here at General Sheet Metal. Uh, and I've been here for about uh, five years now. Uh huh. So yes. Excellent, excellent. Well, um, so you know, from from your perspective, I would imagine that for sheet metal, the the supply chain uh, disruptions have to have been particularly. Uh, dis, you know, I, I don't want to use the word disruptive twice, but sure. particularly difficult because, of course, metal is you know very large and very heavy, both of which are you know make it mm-hmm. extremely difficult to ship. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, we've had some impacts, um, and we continue to manage through those impacts. Um, specifically for us, uh, we've been impacted. Uh, from the galvanized uh, steel Uh material uh, type. Uh, Galvanized is a type of steel that we use frequently. Um, And also aluminum um, has has impacted us as well and stainless steel as well. Um, But um, we've we've managed to mitigate uh, some of those impacts. And um, on the galvanized side, we we've actually seen a little bit of a turnaround okay. a bit of price stability um, over the last say probably a couple of months um, on the galvanized side. Uh, probably prices have actually reduced by fourteen to fifteen percent from the highs um, a few months ago. Okay. Okay. On the nice side, that, that that's interesting because that that is one of the first times I've heard anybody say the price of things have reduced. <laughs> Yes, yes. It <laughs> feels it's, like the price of everything is going up. Absolutely. And we, we see the prices going up in our stainless uh, slash aluminum uh-huh. um, scope. Um, and those prices have, have gone up over 25% uh, from, from the lows. Yeah, yeah. It's been a challenge. Well, so what 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 are some of the things you've been doing to uh, you know to adapt and be successful? Because I think you know that's one of the things that uh, that I think will be a lot of the listeners will really uh, really enjoy hearing about is right. You know, we we have this tricky situation. What are the kind of things that uh, people and companies are doing to adapt? That's a great question. Um, this is uh, the different strategies that we've been exploring. Uh, the key strategy, honestly, is the cost. It's the relationships with the vendors. Yeah. Um, it's this is where your relationships matter. Uh, it, we we you know pre pandemic we took the time to establish some critical relationships, and um, those relationships are now um, the benefits of the relationships are now paying off in uh-huh. this difficult time. So. Um, we've managed to strategize with critical vendors to ensure that we could secure availability of material, uh, material that was limited. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you, you wouldn't be able to do that if you didn't have good working relationships with those vendors. Um, we've also um, tried to pre-buy uh, some of our needs. Um, we had pretty much like a lot of uh, companies a just in time model uh-huh. to the pandemic, but we've you know gone to more of an excess, a little bit of an excess inventory yeah. model to secure pricing and secure availability. Well, and if, if I could interject just a little bit, I, I, I do I think it's kind of funny how things work in, in cycles because of course right just in time uh, that you know that's what I learned in school. I'm sure that's what you learned in school. We appear to yes. be similar ages. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. You know everything was just in time, short supply chain, all that kind of stuff, which works yes. great until there's a shortage. <laughs> and Absolutely. now all of a sudden Absolutely. everybody's scurrying around trying to figure out, oh my God, we need material. We can't sell anything. We can't make any revenue. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I'm like, okay, we, that, we've got to be smarter than this. There's got to be a better way. Oh, there's got to be a better way than lining up for uh, toilet paper or you know yeah. other needs at, um, at at different stores. So I mean yeah. I think you see that nas- you see that awareness nationally now where you know 
excess capacity, um, especially domestic excess capacity, is, is being encouraged. And yeah, um, you know that's that's been a, a hot topic of conversation in the economy. But um, so yeah, we've we've you know we've kind of um, secured some some excess uh, material. We've also you know, encourage that customers to to pre-buy as much as possible or put in orders as, as early as possible. Um, we've also taken the time out to ensure that in our contracts that uh, price escalation clauses uh, are very explicit um, and that prices uh, for different components are, you know, are based on market prices at the time of order, if you will. Yeah. Um, so making sure that that's really explicit in the contracts is, is another strategy that we've uh, undertaken as well. Yeah, well, that's, I was going to say that, that that's really good. I mean, because of course, right, you know, uh, one of the things that I do for a number of my clients is to, uh, you know, work with them right. on their contract ba uh, based expenses, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and particularly contract based expense reduction that that's my specialty. Um, and, but, uh, but I think, yeah, that's, uh, you know, what, what you're talking about where you're really you're looking at the escalator clauses and things like that. Um, you know, that's, that, that, that's very advanced. There's a lot of companies that, um, you know, that, 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 that you know, th th there's a lot of companies where they'll have legacy pricing that'll stick around for a while or the escalator clauses will ratchet the price up, but then it doesn't come down once the index prices mean revert. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So that's, um, you know, that's something we've been paying close attention to and, and you know, encouraging um, our customers to lock into those, um, yeah, to those lower prices, giving kind of the projections. Um the other thing, Doug, that we've done is, is look for substitute products. Oh, interesting. Uh, is, you know, what can we substitute uh, where feasible? Um, that's not always possible, naturally, but um, where we can, um, you know, like paint, as an example, mm -hmm. uh, looking for, you know, different types of paint. Yeah. Um, so, Wherever we can substitute, we've we've also encouraged that with uh, with our customers as well. No, that's uh, that's outstanding. Well, uh, let's see. So I think yeah, we've talked a, few, about, a little bit about some of the challenges. Uh, what do you think are some of the opportunities that you see, kind of you know, going forward into twenty twenty two and twenty three, et cetera, depending on when when people are listening to this episode. Uh, yeah, <laughs> twenty twenty two um, may be in the in the rearview mirror. Correct, correct. And uh, with, with challenges usually comes opportunities. Um, I mean, one thing I think we've, we've done is um, this period has allowed us to focus on the right customers and the right projects. Yeah. Um, instead of trying to be a, a, a you know, one-stop shop for all um, and, and taking on um, all kinds of different types of projects, we've actually narrowed our focus um, onto customers that we really want to work with and projects that we really excel at. So kind of going back to, to our core principles, our core strengths, um, this period has allowed us to kind of pivot to that. Um, it's, it's allowed us to also look at um, other opportunities like on the service side of, mm -hmm. of our business as an example where you know, those tend to be kind of higher return type projects, um, higher profitability projects on the service side of the business. Um, there's a lot of uh, building system um, upgrades uh, that are needed at this time. So uh, we should try to ramp up um, kind of our focus on those types of projects versus new construction. Yeah. Well, and what, what this is kind of making me think of is, you know, because, you know, what, what I think I'm hearing is that, right, uh, you know, of course, a, a lot of your, uh, you know, a lot of your customer contracts will have, you know, you might have some kind of price escalators built in, but you'll have fairly limited ability to adjust pricing on materials uh, when, when your back end costs increase. Uh, but on the other hand, if you can augment with higher margin service businesses, I think that's a way that you can that you can still manage your overall profitability. It, you know, it makes you think of what IBM did. I mean, this is a long time ago now, but yeah. you know, IBM was originally in the hardware business, and then hardware really kind of became just basically just a way for them to get in the door to sell services. I I, yeah. I see that as the way that a lot of companies are probably going to be moving in the future. I don't know if that's something you're seeing as as well, but. 
No, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you can look at the skyline of Portland. It was really, really busy pre-pandemic, um, especially between 2015 and 2019. Um, a lot of those commercial projects have slowed down. Yeah. Um, so um, you've got to look at existing facilities and what service needs um, these existing facilities have. Um, and so we've kind of pivoted to increased our focus and intensity on those service offerings. And those tend to be higher, like I said, they tend to be higher margins. Yeah. Um, um, because they, uh, they take less investment. Uh, the duration is shorter. Um, so there's less um, kind of labor exposure or schedule risk, if you will, yeah. on those types of shorter term projects. Um, so they've really offered us a, a great opportunity um, in these times. Uh, to balance out our portfolio a little bit. Um, we've also, you know, kind of focused just on execution. So execution yeah. excellence, um, just doing things better. Yeah, um, that, that's so easy to say. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> says it, but it's just so hard to do. <laughs> it is difficult. It is difficult to do. Uh, but you, you've got to have the right teams. Um, this is where also making sure you're picking the right projects. Uh, yeah. projects that you can excel at. Um, so kind of picking those Olympic athletes to, to kind of work on these projects that you can excel at and, and do them efficiently, um, as efficiently as possible. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's offered us that opportunity as well. Gotcha. Thanks. Gotcha. No, that's, uh, I, I think that's, uh, well, and, you know, I think that's that's really kind of coming into focus for a lot of companies because it's like, you know, when, um, you know, because you know, what I'm thinking about is, you know, when everything was kind of running smoothly, you could sort of, you could plan, frankly, very poorly and still get bailed out with some expedite fees. Uh, what we you know, but you know, but what would happen is right. You know, you'd be like, oh my goodness, you know, we're behind schedule. Oh, okay, just expedite it. <laughs> it'll it'll mm -hmm. get here tomorrow. Whatever, we'll just pay the fee. Uh, whereas now, if you don't plan ahead, you don't have product. Mm -hmm. you, you know, if you if you haven't accommodated the lead times, there's you know you, you there's no amount of expedite fees that can get it there. <laughs> that, that can get it there tomorrow. If somebody doesn't have it in inventory, they don't have it in inventory. So almost everybody has to order to production lead times now and so at least my observation is that just makes planning kind of more important than it really has been probably in about the last 40 or 50 years i, you, I don't know my, tell me if i'm you, if I'm you, no, you, you, you absolutely hit it on the head dog uh planning is it's it's become even more critical it was important um pre you know some of these new challenges it's never not been important <laughs> it's, yeah exactly but it's become even more of a focus. Um, and, you know, we, we have, you know, kind of daily meetings, uh, daily planning meetings yeah. at, um, at, a, at a lot of our, you know, job sites um, where uh, the teams huddle up and, and kind of go over their goals for the day. Um, and you look at everything from what you're trying to install to do I have all the materials I need uh, for, you know, the next month. Um, so, uh, yes, planning those projects cross-functionally, um, with, you know, all of the other, you know, vested parties, uh, that are needed to, to, to ensure a successful outcome, uh, has become even more important. And those daily hurdles are cross-functional. Yeah. Uh, it involves, you know, the detailing teams, it involves project management, it involves, you know, uh, the foreman, um, uh, and whoever else, you know, it involves, you know, the uh, delivery uh, services, you know, the guys who have to actually deliver the product to the job site. So uh, it's become more critical to ensure that uh, there's agreement and alignment uh, and there is no shortcut to doing that other than talking either, you know, well like, well, and especially because, uh, you know, project management, program management, you know, that that's one of the many areas where I've spent time in throughout my career. And, uh, you know, in, in order to at least what I found is, you know, the, the way that projects go really, really well is, you know, you have to take depending on the complexity of the project somewhere between 
a day and about a week, like basically just locked in a room, mapping out every single dependency so that anytime one thing slips, you know, whether there'll be a cascading impact Absolutely. or whether there, you know, or, or whether it's something you can absorb. And there is no fast way to do that. You no, know, there is no fast time. way to do it. And, and, and it's, it's not just about planning uh, once, you know, uh, projects um, get going. It's, it's really taking it even backwards. It's once an award is made. Yeah, you know, a project is it's it's planning really early. The timing of planning is also critical. Um, so you know we kind of have a process here where we go through a post award um, planning meeting. So the, the 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 project itself might not execute for three or four months, uh -huh. uh, but um, we we encourage our teams to huddle up. You know, say a week or two the award of a project and, and start like mapping out dependencies and you know material planning and um, the execution cycle and what's needed to to ensure um, successful outcome yeah no that's uh that, i think that's i think that's really good i mean you know just just thinking about all the things that that need to come into play for, for stuff to work um well let's see so um so let's kind of uh pivot just a little bit. Uh, sure. So we, we've been talking a little bit about challenges, a little bit about opportunities. But, mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, you know, let's say that, you know, let's say that somebody is kind of coming into kind of world right now and they're trying to figure out, oh, you know, or let's say somebody's entering the job market or they're re-entering the job market, say, you know, say they're changing careers or whatever. Uh, you know, what, what do you think is the right, what, what, you know, based on kind of what you've experienced, what's the right first thing for someone to do? Um, I, you know, I think in, in the new environment that we're in, um, you need people with, um, multiple skills, multifaceted individuals. Um, I, I think it's, it's critical that, um, people can, you, you know, you, you need people doing just various different tasks. Yeah. Um, you need, um, uh, people with very high um, emotional intelligence, awareness, yeah. uh, people who can collaborate, uh, people who can work in teams uh, cross-functionally. Um, and you need people who are uh, accountable. Yeah. Um, people who um, like being held to certain you know, standards of performance, if you will. Yeah. Um, so, I think, you know, it's, a, it's um, you know, people with just multiple skills who, um, who have a high EQ, if you will, and who, who like to work in teams. Um, you, it's, it's, it's hard to work independently uh, these days and be yeah. successful. So, I mean, those are some of the critical skills that I, um, I encourage and I, I see from folks who are successful coming into the, the new workforce. No, I think that's, uh, I think that's excellent. Yeah. The, uh, I, I started uh, incorporating that, that, that question to some of the podcast interviews. Cause, um, you know, one of the things that I hear in some of the podcasts I listen to is be like, okay, you know, if you completely lost everything and had to start over, what would you do in your first 30 days? And I'm like, Hmm, that's, <laughs> that, that, I go, that, that's unique. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, um, and you, you also, I mean, from a technology perspective, it goes without saying that, you know, you need people who, are, who, are, who adopt, who are flexible with ad adopting new yeah. technology. Um, you, you really have to be open to that because um, efficiency and productivity and just looking for new and better ways to, to do the same thing yes. is, um, is critical. In, in the world we live in today, so. Yeah, well, well I mean, I would say uh, particularly because uh, at least this is kind of the, um, um, you know, one of the inflection points that I've seen, I'm seeing is, you know, with labor being so short, it feels to me like, uh, like automation is, you know, it, you know, is eventually going to have to be that bridge. Uh, I think the problem that I've seen is that, um, you know, most companies think, okay, I buy the software, I turned it on, now we're good, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, it doesn't quite work like that. No, it doesn't. You, you still need design, people. You have to design, uh, 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 you have to implement, yeah. you have to test, yeah. you have to debug. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
and um, yeah. you still need you still need people, right, to assess um, and um, and adjust and um, ensure that the technology is being optimized. Right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 not an automatic robot. Um, yeah, precisely. And, uh, and so, so yeah, it's like you know, it feels like that. That's going to be a bridge that I feel we'll get to. But I, I feel like there's a lot of people who are going to have to go through a lot of pain and agony in order yes. to get it. So it's working for what they have to do. Absolutely, a, a little rude awakening. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, outstanding. Well, uh, well, hey, I really appreciate your time. Uh, give us one or two more things to uh, kind of give us one or two more nuggets of wisdom before we. Uh, uh, before we call it, because yeah, I think we're, we're yeah we're right about twenty five minutes. I like to make sure that I uh, okay. you know, respect everybody's time in our in our, in our interviews. Yeah, no, I I think you know um, it's it's obviously been a challenging you know few years, but I think you know just staying positive. Uh huh. Um, and I I think we have more opportunities as a society than 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 you know um, challenges. Yeah, uh, the challenges will always be there, uh, but I think it's it's just it's the approach. I think uh, having a positive uh, can do solutions based approach. Uh, yeah, to how we tackle all of the different um, challenges that are thrown at us um, is is the key to to success um, in this new environment. Um, we have to stay steadfast um and resilient um and that word has been used a lot but it's true uh, we have to stay resilient and uh, and remember that we've we've overcome bigger challenges yeah the global society in the past um so um remain hopeful and um and look for look for opportunities in everything that's thrown at you because those opportunities out there, you just have to, to look hard. Yeah, uh, absolutely. No, uh, great, uh, great insights. Well, hey, I really appreciate your time, Corday. And uh, so, so yeah, what's the best way for people to get a hold of you? Is uh, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, or uh, I'm just throwing stuff out. I tend to do more LinkedIn, but I, I can't yeah, see everybody I, else I, is I'm, like I'm, me. I'm, <laughs> I don't have a large presence in social media by design. Um, that, I was going to say, that's probably very wise of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I have enough distractions professionally <laughs> just, you know, trying to stay focused. Um, so I think um, just LinkedIn is, okay. is probably the best way to yeah, get a hold of me. All right, cool beans. Well, if you're listening, yeah, you'll be able to see Corday's name in the show notes and just ping him on LinkedIn if you'd like to learn more. Thank you, Doug, for your time. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Terminal Value Podcast. Share it with your friends by sending them to terminalvaluepodcast.com. For more information, please visit businessoflifellc.com for full access to Doug's products and services. All rights reserved. No part of this broadcast may be produced in any form by any means without written permission from Business of Life, LLC. All trademarks and brands referred to herein are the property of their respective owners.